everyone, welcome to pal to tech When you really think about it, your SD card is the single most important component of your camera. All of the planning, the expensive gear, the preparations, your reputation, and ultimately the trust that the client puts into you, it all comes down to how you manage this little piece of plastic. Now, my first tip has to do with organization and multiple cameras on a location shoot. I categorize my cameras as camera A, camera B, and so forth. I then use some painter's tape, which is not very sticky and can be easily removed and then put back on. And I write the letter of the camera right on the tape. I then arrange all of my SD cards that I'm gonna be using, and my SD cards have already been labeled by group and then by card number. So I have some SD cards for the A group, one, two, three, and so forth. And then I have some SD cards for the B group, one, two, and three, and so forth. This way I will always know just by looking at the cards, what camera and in what order the card I'm holding belongs to. But that's not all. I also rename the card to that as well so it shows up into the computer and I can immediately see it right in my finder or in my file explorer and it tells me exactly what it is. These are SD cards and this is from the A camera card number one. There it is. Using this trick really helps because sometimes I've got a lot of different external drives and they all appear down a list and I can quickly spot which is the SD card and then what camera it belongs to as well as which sequence card it is. And this leads me to tip number two. It is always better to reformat a card in the camera that you will be using for your shoot. By reformatting your card in camera, you're actually reorganizing the folder structure of the SD card that's specific to your camera's make and model. Now this becomes especially important if you have a different brand of camera, such as your A camera is your Fuji and your B camera is a Canon. By having the cards in two separate groups, I know that all of the cards in group A are formatted for the Fuji camera, say, and all of the cards in group B are ready and properly formatted for the Canon camera. Speaking of formatting and erasing, my next tip is that I never, ever, for any reason, ever erase an image using the delete feature on the camera. For all you know, there could be something on the back of the screen that looks like a terrible image, but when you bring it into Photoshop, there could be part of the image that's absolutely amazing that you could use for a future project. It's one thing if you erase an image on a computer. As on a Mac, you can go into the trash and recover it, even if it's deleted from the SD card. However, if you erase the image in the camera, you're gonna need a data recovery app or piece of software to try and recover it. Every card, disk, or any external storage device will eventually fail. It's just a question of when. Because of this, I never use an SD card that's larger than 64 gigabytes. If that massive 128 gig card fails with the contents of your entire shoot on it, you're screwed. <laughs> to put it mildly. If you were using smaller cards, then at least you would have some photos on those other cards to use. Not great, but better than losing the whole thing. Another tip is actually more of a habit that I got myself into with Fujifilm cameras. If I'm ever needing to turn off the camera and or swap out the battery, I always force myself to look at this little light right here to see if the camera is in the middle of writing data to the memory card. Make it a habit to always check the flashing light before turning your camera off or opening the battery compartment. And if that happens, then there is a chance that not only would that particular shot get corrupted, but the entire SD card could be corrupted. My last tip has to do with what happens in the event a photo does get deleted from the card. It's happened to the best of us. A photo gets deleted when it should not have. There are a number of disk recovery programs available for both Windows and Mac. I happen to like and use Disk Drill Pro for the Mac, but there are many others. I often use Lexar SD cards, and they even have an official Lexar Recover app on their website that's free to use. And make sure that you become familiar with whatever software you have and that you know how to recover something. I'm gonna take three photos and then I'm gonna accidentally delete one, let's see if we can recover it. Okay, here's photo number one. Here's photo number two. And here's photo number three. Okay, three photos. 
Now, let's delete one of them. There they are, one, two, and three. <laughs> ah, all right, let's delete this photo, <laughs> right? Delete frame, here we go. Ready and gone. Okay, well, I'm turning off the camera, taking the SD card out. Now, this is a Lexar card, so I'm gonna use the free Lexar software. Plugging the card into the computer, here it is, untitled. Let's go into it. There, according to Finder in the Mac, there are only two photos on this card. Same thing with Lightroom Capture One, it would only see two photos. I am now opening up this Lexar recovery tool, and there's my card right there, untitled. You see that? Clicking next. So I'm just gonna go with image, next, and it's doing the scan. Then you get this screen right here, and there are JPEGs and RAF files. Up. Oh, have a look at this. For the sake of time, there's my JPEG, recover now. It's now running this recover process. Oh, I like to see a message like that. And it puts it on my desktop. I'll just take a look in here. And there's the JPEG. I fully recovered this picture. I'm gonna quickly bring these in to capture one. Have a look at this. There is my raw file right in Capture One. <laughs> Boy, I'm so glad I recovered that photo. My last tip is actually a habit. It's a habit that I think you should consider getting into if you're not already doing this. On every single SD card, there is a little switch located right on the side, right here. When you move the switch up, it locks the card into a read-only mode, and therefore your photos and your videos cannot be deleted while that switch is toggled in that position. This can prevent some serious disaster from happening. For example, you could have your SD card plugged into your computer and not realize it because it kind of looks the same with the others and accidentally format or erase the wrong SD card. Same thing if you happen to accidentally have one SD card get switched with another SD card on location and you go in and you accidentally format it. That would be horrible. It takes just a millisecond to throw the switch and it could save you a huge amount of time and hassle. The subject of SD cards and file management is an important one. It's not the most exciting and sexy stuff to talk about for photography, but it is so incredibly important. Well, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend and make sure you have a good backup strategy. I'll see you next week. It's a habit you, just a sec. Okay, pretend your SD card is a lamp, right? <laughs> then you reach in and put the bulb. This analogy is going nowhere. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes these analogies work and sometimes they don't. This was one of those times it didn't quite work. Um, yeah.